sponsored by Brilliant. At WWDC 2020, Tim Cook announced that the Mac was leaving Intel and transitioning to Apple Silicon, made by the same team responsible for the A-series chipsets that have been powering iPhones and iPads for a decade. I've done a ton of coverage on all of this so far, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and bell. Now, Cook said the transition would take roughly two years, but the very first Apple Silicon Macs are expected to be released later this year. So I've been getting so many questions from people who wanna know, should they get a new Intel Mac now or wait for the Apple Silicon Macs that are coming next? We all know the designs of the current Intel Macs. Most of them haven't changed in years. The MacBook Air is still a wedge. The MacBook Pro is still squared off. The Mac Mini is still a rounded little box. The iMac is still a giant display on a tiny little stand iMac Pro is the same. Only the Mac Pro is new, and even then it's a throwback to cheese graters past. In other words, they're all known quantities, sleek, elegant, if a little too long on the shelves now to truly be considered inspired. Apple Silicon Mac design, though, is an unknown quality, mostly. Based on what we know about iOS design over the years, we can make a few educated guesses. First, Apple Silicon Macs could be thinner and lighter. Unlike Intel, which has been struggling for years to get down from 14 nanometers to 10 nanometers for its chips, Apple's already shipped a very similar die shrunk design on TSMC's seven nanometer process and is rumored to be ant manning their way down to five nanometers already. That means less power consumption and less heat. To compensate, Intel's reverted to their old strategy of just throwing cores at their problems, which means more power consumption and more heat in enclosures that were anticipating the exact opposite of that, which is pretty much why you see so many thumbnails with so many fire emojis complaining about Mac thermals, but none at all about iPad thermals, which can be just as fast in enclosures not even half as thick. There's a lot of apples to apples other apples and what I just said. But the bottom line is if you're fine with Apple's current Intel Mac designs, if they fit your desk, your bag, and you like the classic sleek look, you absolutely know what you'll be getting. But if you're itching for something that's likely to be even sleeker and you're not concerned about it potentially being thinner, then the new Apple Silicon Mac designs are probably right around the corner for you. And if you, like me, can't wait for an iMac that's as retro future cool as the iPad Pro, just go ahead and drop a like below. The displays on the current Intel Macs range from good on the MacBook Air to great on the MacBooks Pro and iMacs to obscene on the Pro Display XDR. With the Apple Silicon Macs though, they may get even better partially because Apple won't have to work around Intel's limitations anymore with things like custom timing controllers and do what they've been doing with iOS devices for years now. And that's build custom chipsets to directly support the features they want in the displays, things like the OLED on the iPhone. Also because technologies like mini LED are rumored to be on their way. And those are supposed to give higher contrast ratios like OLED without the problems like uniform brightness that OLED suffers from on max size screens. Now, it's possible Apple will sneak mini LED into one of the Intel Macs they say they're still gonna ship before the transition is over, but it's not in any Intel Mac they're shipping now. And it'll almost certainly be in most, if not all of the Apple Silicon Macs. Ports are also a complete unknown when it comes to Apple Silicon Macs. Current Intel MacBooks have USB-C with Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack still. While desktop Macs retain some mix of USB-A, HDMI, SD card, ethernet, assortment. Apple Silicon Macs could license Thunderbolt from Intel. Intel does that now, or they could go with USB 4.0, which can support Thunderbolt. But will they support all the same older ports as current Intel Macs? Also, aside from the iMac Pro, cameras on current Intel Macs are a disgrace. Nowhere nearly the amazing cameras that Apple ships on iPhones and iPads. Could Apple Silicon see an improvement there? Could Apple make cameras as good as the speakers they've been making for the last couple of years? Current Intel Macs have the equivalent of an A10 image signal processor, and Apple Silicon Macs should have something closer to whatever Apple ships with the iPhone later this year, an A14. But the bottom line is Silicon alone can't fix this. Apple needs better camera hardware in the casings, and all we can do is wait and see how and if they deliver it. So if you like the current displays and you have specific legacy desktop port needs and things like cameras aren't deal breakers, the Intel Macs are again a known quantity for you. If you're waiting on better displays though, praying for better cameras and don't care so much if the Mac deletes or changes even more ports, then you can wait on Apple Silicon. Either way, let me know your specific port and camera needs in the comments below.
We've already seen some benchmarks leak out about Apple Silicon performance, probably because the people running those benchmarks don't realize that the app sucks up whatever they run, posts it online without asking permission first. But they've been based on a chipset that will never ship in an actual production Mac, running on emulation with an app that wasn't designed to do either of those things. So they're far more noise than signal. What we do know is that the iPad Pro Silicon is already competitive with Intel Silicon without consuming anywhere nearly the power or generating anywhere nearly the heat. In other words, for MacBooks, they should stay cooler and get way better battery life at the same size or the same battery life at an even smaller, lighter size. Now, it's just a guess, but my guess is that what we'll see with the first few Apple Silicon Macs are slightly better, much more Mac-specific variants of the current A-series versions for iPads that impressively outperform at their size, power, and temperature, and it's just gonna go up from there. How Apple scales silicon, though, is also an open question. Apple said there's going to be a family of SOCs, so some think they'll start small with an iPad-like new 12-inch MacBook, but other rumors suggest they'll start with the MacBook Pro or iMac, like they did during the PowerPC to Intel transition. Last time, it took them until the very end to get to the Mac Pro. So if you know what you need now, and you're okay with the amount of cores, the power, and the heat that it generates, then you'll be okay with Intel. If you're hoping for something better, cooler and longer lasting than what Intel currently provides, you probably do want to wait on those Apple Silicon Macs. And I'll be covering all of the new Macs, Intel and Apple Silicon alike, as they come out. So seriously, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell. Okay, so real talk. Not everything is going to be optimized for Apple Silicon when it first comes out. Apple stuff will be, of course, as well as the indie developers always seem to code just absolute rings around the giant internet and software companies. But there's already software on Intel Macs that's barely supported and takes forever to update, and that probably won't change, even and especially with the big high-end packages. So if you work in production and depend on mission-critical workflows, you probably want to stick with an Intel Mac for as long as you possibly can and see just how much of that software, if any, the ones that you depend on, get updated to work with Apple Silicon and how fast, again, if at all. And that includes Windows, since Boot Camp won't exist on Apple Silicon Macs, and neither Apple nor Microsoft have announced anything in terms of Windows for ARM, much less good old-fashioned Windows for Intel being available for emulation. I'm sure we'll hear something eventually, it just might take a while and might not end up being what everybody wants it to be. Likewise, if you're a hobbyist and you know what you can and can't do on an Intel Mac now, including homebrew and booting into alternate operating systems. I mean, Apple has said you'll be able to go into reduced security mode on Apple Silicon Macs and do things like run versions of macOS that they're no longer signing. And the open source community will no doubt work on updating the tools and things, but we still don't know how any of that is gonna play out or how long it's gonna take. So if you depend on your software environment being the way it is, working the way it currently is, get an Intel Mac that can run it for as long as possible and wait and see how everything else sorts itself out. But if you mostly use Apple apps and web apps and are fine with computers being just black boxes that you do stuff with, you should be fine with an Apple Silicon Mac. And if you're an early adopter, you should be more than fine. You should be thrilled. Either way, let me know how you're leaning in the comments below. When it comes to pricing, we also have no idea what Apple Silicon Macs are gonna cost. If we draw examples from iOS, the cost savings when Apple makes their own silicon compared to when they have to buy it from Intel have been <laughs> considerable. Some Intel chips by themselves cost as much as base level iOS devices, but how much of that cost savings, if any, gets passed on to customers, we're gonna have to wait and see. My guess is, on high-end Macs, Apple is just going to spend that budget on adding extra and better features, so the cost will end up being about the same, maybe a little less. My hope is, though, on entry-level Macs, Apple does what they did with the iPad, with the iPhone SE, with the Apple Watch 3, and that's, that is to introduce versions that cost considerably less than what the standard products have typically traditionally cost. Additional memory, storage, I.O., things like that will raise the prices, but we could get to a point where Macs don't cost that much more than iPads for similar performance, at least when you factor in things like that memory and that storage, and that would be just incredibly disruptive. Now, my always advice is always the same. If you're trying to decide between a Mac now or a Mac later, Intel or Apple Silicon, it doesn't matter. 
Wait as long as you possibly can to buy. Then buy when you absolutely need to buy. Buy the best you can afford at the time and then enjoy the hell out of it because there'll always be something new and something next. In other words, if you really need a Mac now, get an Intel Mac now. If you don't, wait and see how the Apple Silicon Macs compare. And when you need to buy, buy the one that best suits your needs and have zero regrets. Basically, all we're waiting on is for Apple to do the math with Brilliant's new complete math course library, of course. It lets you, me, Apple, anyone brush up on fundamentals, probability, algebra, calculus, trigonometry, differential equations, geometry, all the maths for school, for work, for fun, for figuring out the pricing of Apple Silicon Max. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, in science and in computer science. Courses that can help you achieve your goals in STEM, starting with one small commitment to learning and building up to long term challenge and growth through storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges and problems to solve. Brilliant puzzles you, surprises you, and expands your understanding of the modern world. Go to brilliant.org slash Ritchie and sign up for free. And the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off your annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant. Thanks to all of you for your support. Check out my Mac playlist right up there and see you next video.